There are surprising stories coming out of the Middle East of people who say they've had dreams of God directing them to a certain person or place that will share the gospel with them, to a messenger. There are also people today who claim that God has spoken to them through dreams to give them direction, to give them a future warning of some kind. So is that how God speaks today? Does God speak through our dreams? Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. to our podcast. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. If you would, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. We release podcasts every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. And you can comment if you have any thoughts or questions. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So we're talking about dreams today and whether or not God speaks through them. So fascinating subject um, and one we should answer. Need to. So just to clarify, we're talking about dreams that happen while we're asleep. I know sometimes we use the term dreams or word dreams to refer mm-hmm. to ideas or visions or hopes that we have. Yeah. Um, that's not necessarily what we're talking about today. We're talking about something that happens while you are asleep, mm-hmm. uh, a dream that you have. And so it's interesting, uh, just some facts about dreams. I thought would kind of get us started down the path here is that uh, here's some statistics that have been done based on some research. Um, they say that we, have, we forget 95% of all of our dreams shortly after waking up. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. It's interesting that it's that high a percentage yeah, that we seriously. don't remember them. Um, that we that we have four to six dreams every night. Now, I know you say you don't dream Not a whole many. lot. No. Yeah. I do. I dream yeah. a lot. Uh, I dream multiple dreams throughout the night. In mm-hmm. fact, I kind of both these stats together here. I defy the odds <laughs> well no i was gonna say oh. i have to make myself uh, not remember them because sometimes they're 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 often vivid enough and yeah. there are things i i would want to like what happened with that and so i yeah. uh, i've actually had to train myself to not think about them because wow. if i think about them either like if i get startled and woke up because i've had a dream mm-hmm. if i think about or try to replay it right then i'll remember it throughout the day wow or if I wake up the next morning and think, now what was that? If I recall it, it'll stay. But if if I've learned if I don't, it goes away completely. Wow, that's so interesting. And though I can know what it is in the moment and shortly after, if I intentionally don't think about it, it actually goes away. Yeah. I do not remember it after that. That's so interesting. It's interesting. Uh, the stats also say that a typical dream lasts 5 to 20 minutes. <laughs> For me, they feel wow. like they last all night. Yeah, yeah. And I'll wake uh-huh. up and... I, you know, I tell Heather, man, they had this terrible dream, which that's another mistake. Don't tell anybody <laughs> what you said or it's forever locked in your mind. That's for sure. So I'll tell her, and I said, I feel like I was just doing this all night long. But yeah. in reality, you're you're probably not. Like two minutes, yeah. Yeah. So uh, up to 15% of people sleepwalk, which is interesting. Wow. We had that with a couple of our kids from time to time, mm-hmm. but um, it's not something Crazy. I've ever experienced. Um, 53% of Americans dream about falling. Over and over again. That's I remember doing that a lot. Yeah, if any, if there's any dream, I will remember that dream. <laughs> yeah, especially when those where you know you wake up when you yeah. about to hit the yep. ground or something. Yep, exactly. That moment, something ball comes flying. Out of your face. <laughs> oh ah. no! Uh, Fifty to eighty-five percent of adults have nightmares occasionally. Wow. I can say I would definitely be in that uh, mm. for whatever reason. I don't know why they're wow. they're not always horrific but they're weird yeah they're weird enough that i i don't like it and then uh statistics reveal that the emotions in most dreams are negative Mm. that's interesting that's really always positive yeah so for sure that's really interesting and so there are some stories uh that have come out from uh specifically countries that are closed off to the gospel Mm. uh so more on the um spiritual side of dreams Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's reports of people having dreams where they're being directed again to a certain place or a person Mm -hmm. who will be god's messenger you'll see this usually from like missionary stories you'll hear that or you've heard this from stories in the middle east that you know once they're there they meet a person uh, and they're like wow i've had a dream about you and god's telling me that he was that Mm -hmm. you were going to come and and bring the message to us and their whole family gets saved and all this it's Mm a crazy amazing story yeah wasn't there a story about uh they put up a billboard that had supposedly an image on it yes and it it says if you've seen this man come to this place or if you've seen this in a dream yeah something along those lines and that was in the middle east as well again and and a lot of people went and they did because they said i had that dream that person was in it and then they would share the gospel with them there it's really fascinating so again there's other people who have had dreams where jesus meets them and and 
he tells them that he is the way, the truth, the yeah. life, all this stuff. Interesting. Um, and then in 2007, in 2007, there was a study interviewing uh, 750 former Muslims who had converted to evangelical Christianity. Okay. And there were many reasons, but the one common reason between a lot of them uh, was that they had an experience where God spoke to them through mm. a dream. Uh, just so super fascinating. Again, yeah. closed uh, to the gospel country, yeah. having uh, we see more of the story there, yeah, and a more common theme there yeah. as well, where they don't have the scriptures, yeah, active. Exactly. That's interesting. Exactly. Yeah, and okay. so this last one says Mission Frontiers magazines has reported that out of six hundred uh, Muslim converts, twenty five percent experienced a dream that led to their conversion. So wow, very very interesting. Yeah, which again, that's this brings up the question then. So does God speak? through dreams yeah. should i pay more attention to my dreams exactly. is there something he's trying to say to me yeah in them that's important yeah. question to ask. exactly and again because you have like the bible telling a lot of stories where god spoke to people through dreams and you know yeah. some of those like god <clears throat> spoke to joseph again, known as like the dream interpreter and the yeah. dreamer all of this stuff you know yeah. about his future his family about the nation mm -hmm. uh you know joseph interpreting the dreams that came true of the cupbearer and the baker there yeah. whenever he's in prison and you have pharaoh yeah. uh you know would also have dreams that god uh, used to reveal the future that joseph translated and, and interpreted you know uh, God spoke to Gideon through a dream about his future. God spoke mm. to Daniel through a dream about his future. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, again, had a lot of prophetic dreams, if you read yep. throughout the story of Daniel. And then God spoke to Peter in the New Testament about his plans for him. Yep. And then even Pilate's wife had a dream about her husband mm. and Jesus. Yep. Very, very interesting. And those are just some. There's other stories yeah, exactly. uh, of people in the Bible who had dreams. So, again, that kind of brings the question about, okay, so do we need to pay attention to our dreams? Is this one of the avenues that God... Uses to speak to a mm -hmm. sin. Should I should I be more alert and attentive to all of that? Yeah, uh, you know, you add to that our own personal experiences. The fact that you know we have dreams from time to time about things that are haven't happened yet. Maybe they're disturbing things. Maybe they're future oriented dreams. Um, sometimes we have disturbing dreams about situations. I can remember some dreams um, when we first started having children. You know, some pretty frightening dreams mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. things that would happen to the two one of y'all as, as children and it, it was terrifying like what mm. what does that mean mm -hmm. is that is that is god trying to is, tell me something is god alerting me to some yeah. future event that's going to happen yeah. and that's, does this have some deep spiritual meaning or something like yeah, that yeah and this... the more i more i kept trying to analyze it and figure it out the more disturbed i became yeah, actually exactly. Yeah, exactly. About, i'm not even going to tell what it was because yeah. it's so terrible yeah um so then there's you know we have good dreams sometimes uh, apparently, according to the stats, not as much as you know yeah. bad dreams, but yeah. Uh, until you wonder about those dreams, you know all these good things. Is that is that a foretelling of things that are going to happen for me? Is that God's way of telling me something? Yeah. And then then you have dreams that are kind of spiritual in nature, where mm -hmm. you know God mm -hmm. God is in the dream and God moves in the dream. Yeah. Something miraculous happens in the dream. And uh, I remember one dream specifically because I I woke up, remembered it, and told it to someone. So now it's forever locked in my <laughs> yeah, mind. Yeah. Um, it was a dream where uh, I, I believe Satan was very near and attacking, and he came up out of the ground. I still remember the the visual, the visual, wow. and, and the sound, all of it, and it was frightening. And I said, wow. "In Jesus' name, be gone!" And then yeah. poof, he would disappear back in the ground. Then he'd pop up. It was almost like playing whack a mole, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was the devil. And the, like every time Satan. I <laughs> yeah. every time I mentioned the name of Jesus, he would disappear. So. Yeah. You know, was God speaking through that? Yeah. Is it truth? Is it not truth? Well, it's obviously, you know, a true picture yeah, of what happens, exactly, the power yeah. we have. But those are the things that kind of, again, begs mm -hmm. a question. So what's Why? all this about? What's going yeah. on here? Why am I having these dreams? Yeah. What does that mean? Is God trying to tell me yeah. something? And yeah. it seems today that those are, that's all resurfacing again. There's mm -hmm. this uh, question among Christians. So what is all this? Is God speaking to me? And, it's important. We kind of exactly. come to some conclusion yeah. about that. Definitely. So. Yeah. I and mean, again, we have to have mm -hmm. to see what the Bible says about that more than, well, this person did have a dream one time. It did come true. Yeah. Therefore, <clears throat> it must all be true. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the question. So that's what we are going to do today is yeah. look at what the <clears throat> Bible has to say about this and then communicate that. There you go. So uh, I think we can start with this point that God does reveal himself and he can reveal himself in any way he chooses, yep. including dreams. 
We know yeah. that from history. Absolutely. Uh, he did that in the Bible. It's recorded for us. We trust God's word. So he did it then. Um, some of these other stories coming out of the Middle East today and other places, I don't have a way of verifying mm-hmm. that those happen or that they're real or I don't know, but they are happening. We and do. nonetheless, God did use them. Exactly. He yeah. Them. That brought people to salvation. Mm-hmm. So um, we also find throughout scripture, though, that God used a lot of different ways to speak to people. Sometimes he spoke through a donkey. Sometimes he spoke through a burning bush. Exactly. Uh, sometimes he spoke through a pillar of fire by mm-hmm. day or by night and a cloud by day. And he spoke mm-hmm. through angels. He spoke through handwriting on a wall on one mm-hmm. occasion. So I think another thing we have to remember is just because God did it one time that way, does not mean that is how he will yeah. always do it. I don't have to uh, say, oh, my goodness, he spoke through a donkey. I'm going to go buy some donkeys and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. You know, Oh, he spoke through a burning bush. I'm going to go buy some red tip fatinias and plant them in my yard and see if God <laughs> will speak to me again or, or whatever bush you want it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to go. And light it on fire. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to go sit outside, you know, the vertical church wall on the south side and wait for, you know, a finger to appear etching out a, a message. Exactly. I, I don't have to wait do that because time. because we know that God has given some ways that he speaks. He can do whatever he wants. He could he could write a message in the sky today. Mm-hmm. He could he could cause anything he wanted to have happen, but he has chosen to limit himself to some very specific ways mm-hmm. that he speaks. And that's yeah. it's important for us to understand. Exactly. So uh, I think we could say, number again, number one, God can reveal himself any way he chooses. But number two, God's primary way of revealing himself is no longer through dreams. Mm-hmm. Now, say, how do you know that? I think scripture tells us that. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, all those ways we talked about. Mm -hmm. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So you read through the whole of scripture, there was a way that God was speaking, and then he brought that to a conclusion in his son and with the conclusion of that era of what we what closes up the scripture and it was mm-hmm. complete in that moment. Mm-hmm. Did God stop speaking then? No. He is still speaking, but he is speaking through some very defined ways that he has chosen to. A revealed he, way. <laughs> a revealed way. Yes. Yeah. So he has revealed himself completely through his son. Now, can he do whatever he wants? Of course he can. But he has chosen mm-hmm. and even told us how he's going to reveal himself. So yeah. Um, I think part of where we're headed today, I don't have to think I know where we're headed today, is that if he's given us the some very clear mm-hmm. and concrete ways that he has revealed himself, then why would we have to wonder about the mysterious and the uncertain mm-hmm. ways that he might reveal himself? Yes, and I think also if we're going to encounter a mm-hmm. mysterious or uncertain way, the only thing that's going to determine what it is is the revealed. It's true. You know, we're, we're not going to see how we feel about it yeah. if it's so spiritual or not. Yeah. But we're going to say, wow, I don't fully understand what this is. You know what? I'm going to go to where God has revealed himself yeah. through the scripture. And, you know, that can become a, a dangerous line because a lot of people walk down that. They say, well, I just, it just feels right. I mm-hmm. just, I just feel like this was God speaking to me. I just mm-hmm. had this sense it was I felt God. felt the spirit. Yeah. I felt it. It felt right. It seemed real to me. I, I hear that, but mm-hmm. man, that is the same line of reasoning that the mm-hmm. world is using today exactly. to justify uh, gender dysphoria, yeah. all kind of gender confusion mm-hmm. is by what feels right. So exactly. that's a dangerous, dangerous yeah. area to start walking in, yeah. even for Christians. Exactly, yeah. Um, because in that moment, you, you are saying... I'm no longer trusting in what has been definitively revealed. I'm mm-hmm. going to trust in what feels right to me in the moment. And so now we're we're, we're going against a, a real principle for understanding God and his word and, in fact, life. Yeah. The way we walk by faith is that we interpret the unknown and the mysterious by what is revealed and known. Yeah. 
Exactly. That's what faith is. Mm -hmm. It's the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. I don't trust in the unseen or the mysterious or the feeling I have. Yeah. I trust in what God says because uh, more often than probably uh, not, I'm going to not always feel saved or close to God. Yep. But I trust in God's word that tells me I have been accepted in the beloved, that I have been redeemed, that yeah. I am seated with him in heavenly places. And so I trust in what he says and not in what I feel. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's true for all of life. Mm-hmm. I, I, I This is how I navigate through my faith. This yeah. is how I live my life. This is how I interpret the events of life. Mm-hmm. I don't trust in the circumstances. Yeah. I don't trust in in what others say. I don't trust mm-hmm. in what the world says. I don't trust in five other people's feelings about what's going on in my mm-hmm. life. I trust about, I trust what God says. Exactly. So yeah. when it comes even to this category of dreams, you have to live by this same truth. Yeah. And I think again, just to say, you know, like with, if you're using the two words of the revealed and the mysterious or the uncertain, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. mysterious and uncertain, that's, it's not evil and it's not wrong. You know, it could be emotions. It can be, uh, vibe in the room it could be yep. a feeling it could be a yep. you know spiritual thing yep but it's not to be trustworthy it's not to go all in on yep. this feeling this from my own understanding what i get is this or yep. you know any of those things we have the revealed that is trustworthy that is sure that we yep. do know is truth and that's how we will interpret everything that is mysterious uncertain that yep. we don't and can't sink our roots in, you know? Yeah. So I think it is important, though, to say that dreams are not evil. Right. And I think it's important to say that your feelings are not evil. Good. But uh, it is, it's something where you're going to have. You're going to encounter it. Yeah. So and, we and use the revealed to interpret it. Yeah. Because if I, if, I, if I live just off of some emotions and feelings and... Uh, of my own, yeah, I, I know where that's going to lead me. It's yeah, not always in a good path. Exactly. So. And then just to one more thing on the revealed and mysterious, you mm. know, you even see that like with the will of God. You know, this mm. like oh wow, this like mystical. This is crazy. Mm. What is what is mm. God's like pinpoint laser will of God for me? Is again how some people see it, uh, but I think again if the revealed will is. Yep. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Lean not on your own understanding. That yes. whole Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, revealed will. You know, you also have in the New Testament, this is the will of God, that you abstain mm-hmm. from sexual immorality and that you have a sober mind. You know, <clears throat> that's the revealed will. It says, this is the will of God right there. Yeah. So we follow those things. And in following those things, the revealed, we will encounter the yep. mysterious or the uncertain. Yep. And we use the revealed to interpret it. Yes. You know, and if we say, wow, do I make this decision or this decision? Well, Let's go back to what's been revealed to us. Right. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean yes. not on your own understanding. All of those things. It's good. I think same same truth applies same in truth. all of this. Start with what is revealed and known mm-hmm. and use that to interpret the mysterious mm-hmm. and unknown. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's good. So with that, uh, what I'd say number four is our, our, our reality point today is that God has given us some very concrete ways to know him while we are awake, sober, and clear-minded, all three yeah. important. <laughs> yes, yeah. So to to have you have passages like Hebrews four twelve, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two edged or double edged sword. Mm-hmm. It penetrates even to the, to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So scripture, the Bible, God's revealed word, what we already hold in our hand is his will for us. And we can start there. And Mm -hmm. um, any test ought to begin there of what is this feeling? What is this thought? What is this dream? What is this direction? What is this circumstance? Let's start with God's word. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah. More than adequately, thoroughly yeah, exactly. equipped for every good work. Exactly. That's, or interpreting yes. even the most mysterious, mm-hmm. uh, unknown moments. So with that, here's some more tangible ways that we put that into practice based on what Scripture tells us, we can interpret life 
through Jesus because he has revealed himself in a very concrete way yep. through Jesus. He was a living person, mm-hmm. and his words are have been recorded for us, preserved for us, so we can know truth by what Jesus said, exactly. by what he did, mm-hmm. by his death, and by his resurrection. Yeah. Again, we are Jesus followers. We are those who follow in the way of him. We are the ones who are imitators of him. Yep. And so all the things that we do fall in line with him. Yeah. Every thought we have yeah. is under his submission. Right? Yeah. So if you have a mysterious dream happen, you can ask yourself, is this dream consistent with Jesus and his word and his ways? There's our good starting point. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter how much it felt real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> doesn't matter how... Uh, it moved you. Is it consistent with Jesus and his word in ways? Number two, with that, God revealed himself through scripture, so we don't have to wonder about what his will is. And if you have a dream, you can ask yourself, is this dream consistent with God's word? Or is this dream leading me to do something that's counter to God's word yeah, in exactly. actual opposition to it? If it is, you can know the answer at that point. You can discount it. This is not from God mm-hmm. because God is one. He will not be inconsistent. Mm-hmm. He will not say one thing in his word and then give you something different to do. He just won't do it. He can't. So is it consistent with Jesus? Is it in the scripture? And then if you can answer both of those, yes, but you still aren't sure, mm-hmm. then it's important to seek godly counsel. God has established the church and relationships Mm -hmm. and people around us, family and friends. And when you find those who walk in faith and they, they live lives consistent with the scripture, you can ask them, Hey, can you help me understand this thing that I have in my life or this dream that I had? And then you can ask the question, is the dream consistent and confirmed through this godly counsel? And you can begin to, check off yes Mm -hmm. or no through that and then god reveals himself through his spirit to us now this can be a little bit more subjective at times that's why we need the word of god that is concrete and very objective to help us but the spirit will speak and confirm things as to whether they are true or not within us so you can ask the question is this dream that i had is it does it have confirmation of the spirit of god within me So we don't have to rely on just our feelings, just the mysterious, just the mystical to understand truth. We can know, um, as Peter writes, 1 Peter 5, 8, he says, be sober. In other words, be awake, alert, Mm -hmm. not drunk, not in some sleep state or high. Uh, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Now, sadly... Many people interpret their dreams and live life flipped on this scale Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Instead of starting with what is fixed and revealed, they start with the more... How did this make me feel? Yeah, (laughs) mysterious, feeling, experiential element of, Mm -hmm. well, this just feels right to me. I know this isn't what the Bible says, but it just feels so right, you know? And that's a dangerous path to head down. So Mm -hmm. uh, this becomes essential for us as we're interpreting dreams is yeah. that we start with what has been already revealed by God yeah. and his truth. Yeah. So. And again, like, and there's, there's a group out there that says, man, I don't know what these dreams are. Let me go to the substance so that it will interpret my dream for me. You know, there's that, uh, which is mm-hmm. incredibly dangerous as well. You know, yep. there's not, not just wrong, but dangerous, I would say. But again, like the reverse, if you go through, let's go through my feelings first let me feel this out. Is this, do I feel like this is good or bad? Oh, let me now go bring this to my friends and tell them what my interpretation of this is and to where you've kind of grabbed a hold of it, looking for a confirmation. And then you're going to go to the scriptures after that. That's, it's just so backwards from how we are to do this. And some even turn to substances to try to have the dreams, to try to have some kind of mystical experience. True. And man, you're really opening yourself up to a lot of danger yeah, in that exactly. moment because you're trusting in the unknown, the mysterious, and the yep. feeling realm, and yep. and a realm that the enemy walks in as well. Mm-hmm. So we always go back to what is known to interpret the unknown. That's a rule for 
living life, yep. <laughs> whether it's a dream or trying to figure out what direction God has for us. Mm-hmm. So uh, number five, I would say. Right in line with what you've been saying. Yeah, just saying. dreams dreams can happen to us for so many reasons. Yeah. And a lot of them even are unspiritual. Mm-hmm. So um, dreams, most believe that dreams are really more of the the brain's way of filtering out thoughts, emotions, or experiences mm-hmm. that we had. So, again, I, I, I've had to stop <laughs> thinking about my dreams because I have so many of them, and they're they're all bizarre, you know. Mm-hmm. They're weird things. If you try to, like, there are times I would try to tell them to Heather. And I said, "This doesn't even make sense." What I'm sense, saying, yeah. you know, like, I mean, it just exactly. Like, I need to stop talking. Yep. This yep. <laughs> yep. I sound weird. Yep. And I seem weird. So, yep. Uh, you know, all of that because they are so weird, and and if they are the brain's way of just like, eh, you don't need this, and you don't need this. Yeah. Let's get this out of here. Then. Why would you ever try to build a life direction yeah, from that or assume that, that yeah. God, that's exactly. God speaking Exactly. Uh, for that reason? You, you must be so cautious when it comes to this realm, this mm-hmm. idea of dreams. Yeah. And then when you dream, I think everybody can identify with this. You can have some of the most ungodly and strange experiences happen in dreams. Mm-hmm. Stuff that you think I would never do that. Why did that happen? Why did I dream that? Yeah. Exactly. For that reason, we ought to be even more cautious and careful because if that happens in your dreams, that is not evidence of a life direction yep. or 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 even that it is somehow a prophetic message from God. Yeah. Because again, they're so bizarre. Why would why would we trust in that? And then mm-hmm. how would you ever begin to weed through them all if that mm-hmm. was really what happened? And then Dreams and nightmares, nightmares can be a an, an indication of an influence from temptation or evil in our life. If we've, yeah. you know, I'm sure everybody's had the experience where you watched a, a movie that had a theme to it, and you end up dreaming that theme, or you experience some thoughts in a day or recently, and those thoughts came out in your dreams. They mm-hmm. they can be influenced by that, and so. Why would you put trust in something so um, mysterious, unknown, yeah. and weak in that's, terms of yeah. understanding truth? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's it's so weak because, again, your brain being influenced by so many things and dreams because of your brain, you know, like even the food that you eat affects your brain. Yes. It affects your dreams. Yes. You know, it affects your hormone levels. Again, if you go to sleep, with more of a higher cortisol level or higher stress, you're yeah. going to have different dreams. You know, that's Correct. like, you know, people have said like a common theme for high stress is like your teeth falling out or something mm. like that, you know? And mm-hmm. uh, same for if you were to go to sleep and you had a lot of oxytocin, a lot mm. of like this happiness, mm-hmm. you're going to have different dreams. And then the same thing, especially uh, whenever you're altering your brain with things like vapes and things like CBD and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff, marijuana, uh, and even your thoughts, you know, how much are you thinking about something that's yes. going on in your life? You know, like uh, music is a big influence, I think, yes. on your dreams as well because of uh, the way that it gets into your thoughts and it just becomes the yep. pattern in which you think. So there's so many unspiritual, but also uh, I would say negative uh, influences that can yeah. affect your brain and your dreams. And yep. so Again, all the more we are to be aware of what are we consuming because yep. our body's putting it out somewhere, you know? Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I can remember um, I had a job working at a convenience store and I would, I'd stay up late and then I'd work all day and I'd just be so tired. I'd go home, lay mm-hmm. down on the couch and, and go to sleep. And what the first thing I'd start dreaming is I was doing that job again. Oh, Here I am, yes, you know, the working. worst. <laughs> yes. I'm sure everybody's had that experience. Uh-huh. It's just a reflection. It's again. It's more of a. I like to think of it as a filter. You know, a garbage disposal of the, yeah. of, the of the soul almost yeah. of of trying to rid us of some of those things that mm-hmm. are in there. Yeah, or like you go swimming and then you lay down in your bed and you're like <laughs> doing this whole thing and you're like, this swimming. is ridiculous. Yeah, you know? exactly. And and the fact that we we have to know that even in that realm, the enemy prowls around mm-hmm. in in the unknown. Uh, the mm-hmm. scriptures, of the New Testament, warn us of things like that. First John four says. Hey, don't believe every spirit, 
but yeah. uh, test the spirits to see whether they're from God. I, we can say that about everything. Mm-hmm. Test the counsel. Test the advice. Test test the message of the world. Test the dream you're having to see if it's from God. Yep. And, and First John goes on and says, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, many false dreams, yeah. many unusual feelings, many mm-hmm. strange things have happened. And he says, this is how you recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. It acknowledges that the word became flesh and dwelt yeah. among us. Again, we go back to what is known to interpret the unknown. Mm-hmm. Then you have passages in the Old Testament that were warnings even against dreams and false dreams. So Zechariah 10 verse 2 says, For the idols speak delusion, the diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. So, yes, there are those out there who have dreams, and we should not be listening to everyone just because they say they had a dream. And trusting in a dream would be, it'd almost be as crazy as saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to go find someone that's been strung out on drugs for a week, that's drunk today, yeah. has no purpose in their life, but, man, they're in that zone. They're in yeah. that dream zone. Yeah. I'm going to ask them about that's, my life. That's the person I need to yeah. have me. Give, yeah. them, give me some counsel about what I should do for my life while yeah. they're in that state. Yeah, exactly. That's how. That's the same way it would be just as ridiculous to trust in something as changing mm-hmm. and temporal mm-hmm. and weak mm-hmm. as a dream, as yeah. changing and affected exactly. by so many yeah. other variation and variables in life. Yeah, well, again, I will say on the... The same side of that, uh, or the the other side of the same coin, mm-hmm. with your dreams, there can and will be things you're going to dream about, and it will lead you to asking further questions and figuring yes. out greater truths and all of these things. Yeah. But I would not say that it's like, yes, let me trust every single dream, because then yeah. the question is, if you're relying on your dreams, when do you know, like, oh, this is one I need to trust. <laughs> <laughs> this is one I don't need to trust. If yeah. it's like I just need to trust them all, or who yeah. has the discernment? When is it? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. If you have a spiritual dream and, and yeah. in it you're with other people and you're praying in your yeah. dream and Jesus yeah. shows up and does something mm-hmm. miraculous, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably like you said. That's probably an indication you have maybe been praying or been mm-hmm. thinking about those yeah, things exactly. lately. And again, like the story of you saying, you know, the Satan's popping up and you're saying yeah. Jesus, you know, exactly. rebuking and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe there was in that month or something like that. You're yeah. at something at church and they talked yep. about, you know, rebuking Satan and yep. as on your brain. And, yep. and there that's great because it's like, wow, I have like a mental picture for what this is like, you know, yeah. but I would not say because you had that, that one time you need to just lock down every single dream <laughs> that you have and saying, this is what God is telling you today. Yeah. I think maybe it's because they are mysterious that people gravitate to them. Definitely. Yeah. You know, definitely. I, but it's kind of like our thoughts. I, uh, who knows the number of thoughts we all have in a day. Mm -hmm. And we all would admit not every one of those thoughts are always good thoughts. Sometimes we wonder where did that even come from? Exactly. But just because I had it doesn't mean that I need to rely on it. Sometimes I just need to toss that thing and say, I don't know where that came from, but it doesn't belong here. And it's not me. And yeah, Yeah, that's not me. And I'm not going to claim that I am that because I had that thought. Yeah. Yep, Mm. that's another podcast coming. There you go. (laughs) So the same is true for dreams. Just because I had a dream does not define me. Exactly. Just It doesn't direct me, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily indicate that God is speaking to me. And you might say, well, what about those people in the Mideast who had those dreams? And God used that to direct them. I would go back to a statement we made earlier that those were in areas where the word of God is rare, Mm -hmm. if not absent. Yeah. And so, again, God uses very fixed ways to speak truth to us. He's revealed himself through his word. So if there were an area where there were not uh, evidence or or, uh, the provision of Scripture, then God is going to use other ways. He might Mm -hmm. use dreams in that kind of scenario. He can work Mm -hmm. any way he wants. Definitely. But that doesn't mean that that's something we should lean on. We shouldn't have to lean on the uncertain and the ambiguous yeah. and the mysterious when we have in our hand the clear revealed word of God. So, yep. and even those that he spoke to that led them to salvation, I'm going to guess that that's not going to become the way he keeps speaking to them is through these dreams. True. Yeah. It's good. So 
with all of that in mind, let's let's venture over into even a more uh, fun topic, possibly <laughs> controversial, fun topic. Because you get inside the realm of church, and then you get into this thing of people saying, "I I had prophetic dreams." Mm-hmm. This is where a Christian says, well, "I had this dream, and I believe it was God telling me this." And they usually follow that with, and so I'm telling you this because God gave me a prophetic dream for you. So that begs a different question. Is that how God speaks? Does or, he does he reveal himself to other people through dreams to tell to me? A specific thing. A very specific it's mysterious. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I didn't know, but something that I need to know or do. Or a warning or a potential blessing. Is that how God speaks? Yeah. Well, Great question. I'd say check out our podcast. Uh, yeah. from, uh, I guess quite a few months ago now. It's yeah. called Are There Modern Day Prophets? Um, we answer this question <clears throat> in a lot of detail. We're going to talk about it more and specifically on the yeah. dream side of things, but it's a really good podcast. Just check it out. <laughs> Well, and let, let's bring back some of the points because, yeah. again, we go back to truth. Yeah. Um, as those who have been saved, we have been saved and now have access to the throne room of God yes. ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, come boldly to the throne of grace. We have been we have been given access mm-hmm. to the throne room, to the very heart of God through Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't have to go through a priest, a pope. Yep. Or a pastor, yep. or any person to get there, I can come directly to the throne of God, and He can come directly to me. In fact, as a redeemed child of God, I have the Spirit of God living in me, so the distance of Him speaking is really not that far. Yeah. It's from His Spirit to my Spirit, mm-hmm. uh, and so it comes down to me listening at this point. So I don't have to have someone else tell me the direction God has for my life. I can get that on my own and should. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, God told me this about your life, I'm just going to tell you up front from me, that is a red flag. I'm I'm immediately on the defensive because I, I trust God's word to speak to me. I trust God's spirit to speak to me. Uh, there might be others who have encouragement for me. There yeah. might be others who have a, a word of scripture they want to share with me. But that's different than someone saying, God told me through a dream that this is going to happen to you, so get ready. I just, I think that kind of fits in the category of, of the Hebrews passage we read. God in various times and various ways spoke mm-hmm. to our the forefathers, but in these last days has spoken through his son. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm all for someone wants to come to me and give me a word of encouragement. I'm all for someone wants to come mm-hmm. and tell me they, they're praying for me. I'm all for somebody wants to come and say, man, uh, I'm so grateful for what God is doing through you. Here's what he showed yeah. me about yeah. my own life. And even on the the side that, because all of those things are the positive things, I yeah. still think there is, I would still be all for someone saying, hey, someone that's close to me. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Hey, I see what's going on in your life. Uh, This is sin that you're walking in. Yes. There's consequences ahead for you. Yeah. You're going to walk into pain and struggle. Yeah. You ought to turn around. Yeah, exactly. You know, not, it's not that he's not just saying, I only want people to say positive things. No, 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 no. Not positive mental attitude around here. No, no, no. It's the, uh, oh, I had this dream that your cat died. And so you better get ready. Yeah, That's exactly. Yeah, of things, more but. of a prophetic sense of with authority. Yeah. I have had this and mm-hmm. I declare this is going to happen to mm-hmm. you. I just don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I had this experience. Yep. And it was God telling me that I need to tell you this. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly there should be a room where we welcome correction, mm-hmm. um, confrontation. Mm hmm. Um, and encouragement at the same time. Uh, and believers should speak the truth to one another, but um, a declarative, authoritative dream is a different. That's a different animal. This, I think, 
um, from what we read there in Hebrews, and as you come to the ending pages of the New Testament, you don't see that happening where God is telling this person to tell this person, uh, again, once the scriptures have been complete, you don't find mm-hmm. that as much. God can do whatever he wants, and mm-hmm. I recognize in some places he does those things, but we shouldn't be those who seek that when yeah. there's so much yeah. that's already revealed mm-hmm. to us. Yeah, it's not like we are not putting God in a box, but we're also not see, holding the box in our hands and looking everywhere else for God. Yeah, <laughs> whenever, exactly. whenever we know he is yeah. everywhere, you know, but we're, we're going to where he has officially and literally revealed himself to us, which yeah. is in his word, you exactly. know, in, in the church and, in you know, through the spirit, all this stuff. Yeah. And, and if you say, well, I just don't know what all those ways are. Well, that's, that's motivation to get to know God's ways yeah. more. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the old Testament, gives warning about some of these things. In Deuteronomy 13, it says, If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. So there's someone who had a dream. Uh, seems to be some validity to it, but it's taking you in error. It's taking you mm-hmm. in a wrong direction. Mm-hmm. He says, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Our primary command is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, yep. soul, mind, and strength. And so any anybody that comes with a dream or any dream I personally have mm-hmm. ought to be through that lens of, is this helping me love the Lord my God with all That's of my it. heart, soul, mind, and strength? That's it. That's it right there. If it's not, then... I cast that aside. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't hold on to it any more than I hold on to a mm-hmm. random thought that hits me in the middle mm-hmm. of the day. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to hold on to the random thought. I'm not going to hold on mm-hmm. to the dream yeah, either. Exactly. And again, then in the same vein, you know, sometimes, at least for me, you know, I'll have a random thought that pops in my head that's on the like, wow, I further understand this spiritual truth. Yes. Or wow, I further understand this relationship. I understand. This happened to that person. That's why they're relating this way. Something yeah. like that. Right. I'll have that random thought, but I'm not waiting for random thoughts to just hit me. You know, I'm yeah. still going to go about operating in relationships and all yep. this. You know, all of these things. And so, yep. to to sit and wait and be like, I'm just going to wait until I have a dream that tells me more about how to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's not yeah. it. No, that's 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 denying and ignoring what has already been revealed. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. So uh, I think the last piece I'd say uh, when it comes to this whole thing of dreams is God has given us his word, his spirit, and Jesus so that we can renew our mind with truth, so that we can really know truth. And I don't have to lean on the unknown and the mysterious, and I don't have to lean into the circumstantial, you know, things of, uh, I saw four taco trucks today on the way home and three restaurants that said yeah. taco day on or what. Yeah. So therefore I think I, I think God's telling me yeah. to open a taco stand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I yeah. mean, I, I, there's, I see a lot of weird stuff every day. Yeah. I, you know, I, I see three squirrels cross the yard in front of the office and I see seven squirrels in my yard at night. Does that mean I'm supposed to have squirrel for dinner? No. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just squirrels playing. Exactly. Um, exactly. Start with revealed truth. Yeah. And, and then so build, good. build upon that. Yeah. If you and, made that your life motto and your life, you know, challenges, I'm going to work everything off of revealed truth. Yeah. And I will interpret all the mysterious by the revealed. You, your life would be very, yeah. you'd have a good purpose clear vision for your life. Yeah. And then I don't have to spend all my time dwelling on the unknown. Yeah. Cause if Just that's paralyzing, my, yes, paralyzing. that's what happens. If I all of a sudden put credibility into my dreams and my thoughts and where they came from, we all know what happens. Then I'm spinning all day long. Why did I think that thought? I wonder what that thought means. Should I act on that thought? I wonder why yep. I had that dream. What does that dream mean? Why did I have that dream? What is that dream coming from? I wonder what that dream means. I wonder if I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to... And pretty soon you, the day is wasted and you missed yeah. every opportunity to fulfill your role as a husband or wife, fulfill yeah. your role as an employer or employee, fulfill your role as a child of God and being mm-hmm. engaged in the moment and your mind mm-hmm. sharp and alive to God's truth that he's speaking to and using it because you're just, you're, you're fretting away. And what that leads to Mm, it's so cyclical that puts you back in bed at night and your mind is worn out. Yeah. And what have you been thinking about all day? 
dreams and the unknown and the mysterious and the what ifs. And guess what? You go to bed. I really can't sleep. My mind is just racing all the time. I don't know what's going on. And what kind of dreams do you have that night? Stress. More (laughs) confusing, stressful, unknown, weird, disconnected, disjointed dreams. So true. Yeah, I just told him myself, but <laughs> no, I, you know, so I think that's where some of that comes from. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it brings you this place of, all right, I'm going to come back to renewing my mind with truth. I'm yep. going to settle. Exactly. Let those yep. things bring me peace. Let yeah. those things bring me to a place of rest where, you know, the last 10 minutes of my night before I close my eyes is not filled with all these what ifs exactly. and what, if, what if I should have done this? Three years ago, thirty years ago, what if, what if I should do this? What if I done this yesterday? What if I do this tomorrow? What if I don't do this tomorrow? All that stuff—that's not the peace of God. That's that's the fret of me. Yep. Yep. Instead, so, so true. it's good. Good stuff about dreams. I hope it's helpful to you. Yep. Uh, our goal, as always, is to help us understand how do we how do we live Him out? How do we live out this faith that's been given to us? through Jesus Christ and, and by God's word. I hope this helps today as you process through the idea of dreams and it'll help you to keep lifting him up and living him out.